As the big man Ian Wright just said there, people deluded, I'm back again. As usual, big up to everybody tuned in. I appreciate your continued support. If you're new here, make sure you're subscribing. Everybody listening, do me a favor and make sure you're smashing the like button. As I, as I always say, get the creative juices flowing, people, because we've got a lot to go over. I'm happy the international break is drawing to a close. On the eve of doing this video, Declan Rice will be making his 50th cap for um England against Belgium and he'll be captain in the side hopefully there's no injuries in that regards on the topic of injuries the ITKs of this world are saying it's touch and go with a couple of players Declan Rice has obviously spoken about captain in the country and where strikers and players are concerned as you know the transfer news keeps going on so yeah as I said hit the like button and let's get straight into it now Ivan Tony. A lot of Arsenal fans think he's the Messiah. A lot of Arsenal fans are happy of recent reports saying that we're kind of distancing ourselves from Ivan Tony. Manchester United are apparently, you know, getting ahead of Arsenal in Chelsea where Ivan Tony is concerned. For me personally, I think everybody, well, all the teams linked with Ivan Tony, Chelsea, don't know for Spurs, they ain't got the, the clout like that, but Chelsea, Chelsea, Spurs, Arsenal, Man United, whoever else been linked with him, just based on his contract running down, any interview he gives, he makes it clear that he wants to leave. Thomas Frank from the, the summer of last year has spoken about such. I personally think everyone will go and explore other options with the safe banker, knowing that as every day and week ticks on in the summer, Ivan Tony is someone that's fairly attainable. And I said he would be a great option for Manchester United for what it's worth, you you know, um, Thomas Frank's been linked with the United job as well as Gareth Southgate. But I thought he would be a good signing for Man United. He's Premier League proven. He helps ease the burden on Ramos Hoysland, who's doing all right. Romano has said Arsenal and Chelsea could be hijacked from for, for the Manchester United target, Ivan Tony. Not sure on the word of, of, of hijack. You don't know what's going on in the back burners. But to me, as an honest fan, if it says Arsenal and Chelsea are moving away from Ivan Tony and Man United or anyone else are going for him, it's not exactly like Arsenal's bid for, for Mudrick getting hijacked by Chelsea. So whatever in it. But anyways... It's just one of the options to be considered and discussed internally, said Romano. As I've said multiple times, Man United are still in the early stages of the process to decide which striker they want, experienced or young. I mean, it don't really matter, really, but you'd imagine an experienced striker would make sense because it's a good contrast to Hoysland. Talks are going to take place internally. Tony will be one of the names available in the market, so could be one to watch. So, yeah, man, you can't rule out the 28-year-old staying at Brentford, but it looks like he'll be keeping it moving. Arsenal and Chelsea have probably been linked with the same striker targets, including Victor Osserman and Joshua Zertsky people. So I have to see how that develops. I know he's been injured, but a lot of Arsenal fans did like the look of Leverkusen striker and Nigerian international Victor Boniface. Apparently, the 23-year-old, according to this reporter in Sky Germany, has a big market in England. In addition to Bayern, Leverkusen has a concrete verbal inquiry for him from an unnamed club from the Premier League. Boniface is not actually for sale as they would like to keep him. Now, obviously, he's probably under contract for a decent amount of time and you saying a player is not for sale means you can get some more money. Leverkusen would be willing to talk if offers of more than 55 million euros would have would be made. So yeah, I don't think that is the craziest of FIFA. Some of the striker targets you see in their price tags attached. He's back in training after having a doctor surgery in January. So you'd imagine clubs would like to see the progress of him before, you know, drawing him up. This article has also said that if Arsenal and Chelsea did want Victor Boniface, then they could pay half the price of Victor Osserman, allegedly. PSG have been aggressively linked with, with Victor Osserman. Some reports today have actually said that that's a dream of his, whatever that means, I don't know, because he has talked on his ambitions of playing in the Premier League. Romano has spoken before people obviously on Victor Rossman as well and said that, you know, Premier League clubs are drawing interest with him. On the topic of that individual, it's well known his release clause is anything from 100 to 130 million. Apparently, Chelsea and Arsenal have been linked with the move for the Napoli striker Victor Osman in recent months. The striker has a massive release clause in his contract and his suitors are unwilling to pay up. I wonder why that is. A report from Napoli magazine claims that Chelsea and Arsenal are willing to pay up to 77 million for the player. You'd imagine PSG 
if they did want another striker, would be more than happy to pay a decent amount more than that. It'd be interesting to see if the Italian outfit are prepared to accept the offer and sell him below his release clause. Didn't they pay something around that for him already? So I'd imagine they want to make some profit on, on such people. Um, so we'll have to see. Uh, as we know, Osman has a release clause of 120 to 130 million. Some reports say 100, some say 130. I'd imagine just in terms of business, no one is going to be in a hurry to splash that money on him. There's no doubt that the 25-year-old Nigerian international is one of the best strikers in the world right now and he helped Napoli win the league title last season. He could prove to be a quality acquisition for London clubs. Fair enough. As we know, Chelsea are looking for a striker. Arsenal obviously looking for a striker, you know, because as much as we like Kai Havertz and his run of form, what Gabriel Jesus brings to the table. And I know he's not the flavour of the month and I know he's probably not good enough for where we want to go, but I do think on the large part, Eddie and Ketia has done well, but neither of them carry that pedigree or any of the names I said of being consistent goal scorers per se. So I would like the best of all. I say both worlds, but all worlds in that. If Arteta wants to continue with Kai Havertz up front or utilise him in certain games, great. Trossard the same, Jesus the same. But if we have another man that carries a, a, a 20 to 30 league goals, especially if they're a striker, I'm all for that. I must admit, I do think though, and obviously you want all the other players scoring. I am starting to believe now that we're not really going to go for an out-and-out striker. It might be a kind of versatile guy of the Trossard ilk that can play up front on the left, on the right, and is able to get a decent amount of double figures. And that adds into the goals being spread out all across the team, especially, you know, our attackers and the fact that we've got better at set pieces and people like Gabriel have benefited from that. So we'll have to see exactly where that's concerned. Romano has said, I think Chelsea will be there. The interest is still there. It's really important to understand what is happening here. First of all, with the FFP situation, because Chelsea do not want to overpay. So it's important to know how much the package is going to be for Victor Mossman. And you'd imagine he's going to be on handsome wages. I would, I'm not an accountant, but you'd guess anything from 250 grand a week all the way upwards to around the 300 mark. We already know about the release clause between 120 to 130 million euros with Napoli. So Chelsea and other clubs are waiting to see if Napoli can be flexible but usually with their president it is usually very tough to go there and negotiate especially for a fantastic player like Victor Osman it will then be important to see how much Osman wants in terms of salary and his contract so there are some crucial financial points to sort out before Chelsea can say OK and go for us. I mean, you'd imagine that applies to Arsenal and anyone else interested in the Nigerian and Napoli striker who has 72 goals in 125 games for Napoli. We can leave with his head held high. He got 26 goals in the league last year. That's great. From one striker to another, Alexander Rizak has been linked with Arsenal. Again, I've done a video on Victor, um, on, on Victor Osman, yes, but I meant to say Alexander Rizak. Go and check that out. And I've actually done a video saying, do we actually need a striker? Um, as well as many others so make sure you're making a mental note of that people you're checking out the rest of the content you're hitting the like button and you're subscribing and you're commenting any thoughts that we've you've got so far leave them in the comment section um under the video uh isaac has said on speculation it doesn't affect me that much it's been talked about many times in many windows i see it as such a thing everyone knows that the summer is coming and if, if things show up things can happen but i actually haven't even thought about it fair enough and it's going to cost a lot of money for isaac really and truly now we were once upon a time linked with jao cancelo one minute he's you know barcelona want to pay to sign him permanently then they want another loan then they're not convinced arsenal could do with another versatile defender and he was linked with us before i said so we're seeing it again. Apparently, Arsenal are in the race for Jao Cancelo from Man City, where he's kind of through his former, technically current, but former teammates under the bus, where he said Pep Guardiola's not been not been honest. Arts Rico Lewis and Nathaniel Ake would be keen to see what they're saying. Um, so, yeah, and probably burning all his bridges because I know he's probably not going to have a future at Manchester City and, and he's obviously at Barcelona and I'm sure he wants to move there if not anywhere else but he is contracted until 2027. Um, he has openly stated his desire to join Barcelona permanently and Man City are keen to let him leave. Apparently you, you, you know Arsenal want to try and get a deal done and he has a £40 million asking price. Now Chelsea have shown they'll sell players wherever, um, Chelsea sorry, Man City will sell players wherever but you'd imagine with Arsenal getting better and better it's not like the summer of when we signed Zinchenko and Jesus, I don't imagine Pep Guardiola would want to help us out in that regards, people. I'm not too sure I believe this. Quality player, a bit shaky defensively, but a quality player. But I'm not sure I believe that. Romano has been speaking about Diamande of uh, sport in Lisbon as well as Goya Keres as well, people. He said, I think this story is coming out because Arsenal sent their scouts 
um, regularly to follow players in Portugal, like Goya Keres, who's one of the players they've been following for a long time. On Diamande, however, I'm not aware of talks or negotiations yet, but there are many clubs interested, so absolutely far from a solution slash negotiations or anything close or concrete yet. Been linked with Newcastle and Chelsea as well, and he has a price tag of they're saying 80 million as high as that we've gone over Ivan Tony young Amari Benjamin allegedly has been told that his days at Arsenal are numbered he's went on trial at Everton and it's a great success because apparently Everton are keen to offer him a pro deal when he does get released people so yeah big up the Welsh youth international and current Haylander we hope he can do his thing we'll get on to Declan Rice in a minute 70 million for Ivan Tony's a bit mad Bayern Munich fans will not be permitted into the Emirates when we play them it seems like strikers are the theme of this video I've done a video on Mika Beref as well and that's to come out soon so make sure you're subscribing and turning on your notification bells he's done quite well since going to Austria and joining Stuttgart and again their director made no secret of wanting to initially sign him permanently um and apparently he's wanted by several clubs in the summer. He has eight goals in 11 games currently, and apparently Stuttgart would love to keep the 21-year-old 20 beyond this season, but they're likely to face competition for his signature. So if he doesn't make it at Arsenal Football Club, it could be a great profit maker. Him being 21 and having a good loan spell, Arsenal might give him a new deal to protect his value and then loan him out. There could be a, a, a way of integrating him into the team if he impresses in pre-season. But, you know, we've got Eddie and Ketia who might leave, but on this on paper, Eddie and Ketia is ahead of me. Gabriel Jesus is ahead of him and signed for 45 million and an important player. Kai Havertz is very versatile, but he's doing his thing up front. Trossard is there and there could potentially be another striker. So that's five forwards ahead of him in the pecking order. And you would imagine that we're going to spend a fee collective fee similar to what we spent in the summer or more addressing all areas of the team as we look to get better. But you, you know, you've got to, no matter how rich you are and Arsenal are a rich club, you've got to think about outgoings and, you know, speculation would be either over Nketi or over Nelson, over Smithrow, Cedric will go free and up wages, Partey is subject to speculation, Aaron Ramsdale probably won't be at the club, you know, Lokonga, someone that's doing well at Luton, the club might say, you know what, move him on, Charlie Patton, who's doing relatively well at Swansea off the back of the Blackpool loan, could just say, let's just make our profit and keep it moving. So if you've got a 21-year-old in high demand in a day and age where there ain't too many great strikers out there and he's got a year left and you're presented with a sizable profit than what we spent, I assume, buying him from Fulham, the club might just say, you know what, good player, let's make money and let's keep it moving. Um, and considering he was signed in 2021, three years on, it could be decent, really and truly. Um, so we'll have to see exactly what's going on in that regards, people. But yeah, with a year left on his deal, there'll be speculation. Allegedly, Paris Saint-Germain have entered the race to sign Victor Goyakeres. Uh, so that's PSG, Arsenal, Chelsea, Man United. You actually have seen Newcastle United and West Ham United linked with the 25-year-old Swedish international and current sport in Lisbon striker, who's probably one of the most informed forwards on the planet, man. The, the amount of goals he scored is ridiculous. I'm not too sure if they'll actually go for him, but everybody is linked with everyone and again I don't know what these clubs are doing but Man United, Arsenal, Chelsea PSG, we're all linked with the same players, especially strikers is everybody in for a forward? I don't know you would expect to see some sort of merry-go-round in that regards in the summer so we'll have to see Apparently, Arsenal were interested in signing Nottingham Forest defender Murillo. Forest valued a 21-year-old at 50 million, and they could be forced into a sale due to financial their financial situation, but are unlikely to budge on their valuation. Apparently, Give Me Sport have also said rather than splashing out on a world-class level defender, so that probably rules out you know the higher names we've been linked with or more household defensive names. Arsenal are looking to bring in someone of valuation of Murillo. Arsenal have also been linked with Eintracht Frankfurt defender William Pancho, who is likely to cost a similar amount. So it's going to be a hefty one. Shout out to Declan Rice. He will make his 50th appearance for England and will also captain England um, against Belgium. So big him up in that regards. On the topic of him, he has been speaking where he's spoken about Benjamin White potentially being captain of Arsenal and all of that sort of stuff, people. Um, he did say, I was speechless. I stood up in relation to Southgate telling him. I stood up, shook his hand, gave him a hug and said, thank you so much. Since I've come into the side, he's put his trust and belief in me to now win 50 caps and captain the side. I'm speechless. He then went on to say people on, you know, Benjamin White and all them kind of players. When I get back, I can have a conversation with him. I would love him to come. I think Bakayo Saka, pause. I think Bakayo Saka would. I think Aaron Ramsdale would. We're all going to be on him when we get back. Hopefully we can change his mind, people. Fair enough. He then said, John Stones didn't know you're playing. He's playing Arsenal next Sunday. You'd imagine John Stones, elite mind games from John Stones. Of course, you know you're playing Arsenal on the weekend. You think Pep Guardiola isn't letting you lot know exactly what games you have to play and what's actually at stake on Sunday. 
Sunday. But for what it's worth, I said to John Stones, I said, big game next. John said, who are you playing? I said, we've got you. We know what a big game it is going to be, a potential title decider. We've got to go to the Etihad, which is going to be really tough. But if you want to get past that barrier of Arsenal being labelled stuff, you have to go there and win. Elite mind games, elite mind games. Having 10 years at West Ham shaped me into the person I am today. When I got to Captain West Ham, I was growing in confidence and as a leader, I still see myself going that way. There's Martin Odegaard at my club. I'm not thinking about it, but if anything were to happen to him, I would really love to put on the armband for Arsenal. 50 caps is a pinch me moment. I've grown so much as a player and a person since I first came into the group at 19. Yes, you have. I've... I was probably a nervous player when I first came into the England squad, but I've grown into it. I've enjoyed every single minute. The other night, we looked at the caps and people I've surpassed already. Hopefully, I'll keep going up. To me, it still doesn't feel real. To me, I'm still deck, just a normal guy. I'm playing for England, playing for Arsenal and achieving my dreams. Big him up, really and truly, if I'm honest with you. And we won't waste our time on what he's had to say about Harry Kane and Carl Walker. Ain't no one care about them Spurs dons. Uh, Zuba Mendy links won't go away. Apparently, Arsenal in clear to sign Zuba Mendy as rivals deem deal too costly. I mean, we all know, and then they could leave. Speculation over Thomas Partey, Jorginho, one minute new deal. They're not, according to reports. We all know Arsenal have an admiration for Zuba Mendy, and he's been linked with Barcelona, Manchester United, Bayern Munich, as well as us. Barcelona are labelling him too labeling him too expensive. He has a 60 million release clause, which equates to 51.5 million quid. He's contracted until 2027. So again. Not much room for negotiation. I mean, we've gone over the Diamande stuff already. If you look care, Anthony Taylor has been appointed referee for Arsenal's trip to Manchester City on Sunday with Jared Gillett on VAR people. Once again, Romano has said, but for sure, Arsenal have an interest, as do other clubs around Europe. So I expect Goya Keres to be part of this striker domino in the summer. Uh, once again, PSG are not, this is conflicting. PSG are not currently targeting sporting striker Victor Goya Keres. PSG have faith in Ramos and Kolomani. Fair enough. Big up you lot. We have been once again linked with Joshua Kimmich. Apparently, he already knows his only way of joining Barcelona would be as a free agent. So we'll have to see exactly what's going on there. And I don't know if Mr. AFC Camden or the ITKs of this world know or don't know what they're talking about. I mean, no shade with that. But for what it's worth, apparently Saka Martinelli and Gabriel are all racing to be fit for Sunday. We touch and go for all three of them. Could be a big boost for City if they don't make it. For a team that's got one of the finished squads by Mar Mikel Arteta's own words, happy birthday, Gaffer, for what it's worth. That does concern me, especially because you now see, it's been the case all season. We've been dealing with injuries since August, but all, uh, April, sorry, is jam-packed with fixtures. You know, you look at jumping ahead, but you look at the Spurs game, uh, they will actually not play a game in the period that I think going into that Spurs game or that kind of period, we've got four games, they play none. We wanted to be in this territory and now it's time to do this thing. So we'll have to see. But with that being said, that's all there is to consider from an Arsenal standpoint. Let me know your thoughts on Declan Rice's comments. Let me know your thoughts on Goya Keres, on Osimhen, on everything else we've discussed, people. Stay safe, stay blessed. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. Hope you all stay blessed and you're all in great health. Peace.